Hey, how's it going? This is McCoy Buck, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to create a simple rigged character. Now, this tutorial will be perfect for you if you're just learning how to rig, or maybe you have a little bit of experience in Moho, but you're still not quite understanding the rigging process. This video is gonna be perfect for you. I've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentoring lately with a lot of the users of the software and a lot of beginners. This is gonna be using the same process with a lot of those that I have taught. So the character that you see here on my screen is the same one that I use when mentoring. Or if you wanted to use your own character, that's totally fine too. This is just a, a simple rig that hopefully will be able to help you. All right, if you got the rig downloaded and you have it open, let's go ahead and get started. So I wanna go over real quick how this rig is broken down. So in your layers panel menu over here, you can see that he has a head, a front arm, his torso, his front leg, pelvis, back leg, and his back arm. So it's a really simple character. There's no hands, shoes, feet, anything like that, face. Um, I just wanted to make this as simple as possible for you. Now something that's important to notice is the tools, how they're dynamically changing on the left-hand side of the screen, depending on what layer you're selecting. So if I select the layer right here, this is the vector layer, it has that little bean symbol there that lets me know that I'm on the vector layer. That is different than the bone group layer. So the bone group layer is what's gonna give me the accessibility to the bone tools to be able to create the rig. So if you're following along with your own rig or your own character, make sure you go into the new layer and you go down to this drop down and select bone. And then all the vector layers or if you're even using images that you created your character with, go ahead and drag all those layers into that bone group layer so that you can start rigging. All right, now with the bone layer selected, go to the left-hand side and select the add bone tool. It's gonna to be this bone plus icon here and the keyboard shortcut for that is A. Now I won't be using any keyboard shortcuts, though I highly recommend using keyboard shortcuts to speed up your, your rigging process, but I'll be clicking on the individual tools so you can see exactly what they are, where they're located and make it easier to follow along. Now you can see when I'm selecting the different tools that I'm having these tool settings up here change dynamically as well. And if you look here underneath of that tool settings option, you can see that there's some tool tips regarding that tool. One of them that we're gonna be using is the shift key. So if I hold down shift and I left click and I drag up, it's gonna constrain that bone perfectly, either vertically or horizontally. Now you can see after I have drawn out my bone, I have some new tool options that have become available to me. One that I'm gonna to use to show you how the bone works is the transform bone tool. Now with the transform bone tool selected, you can see that I have these two nodes here on my bone. This top one lets me scale my bone up and down. So if I need to change the scale of my bone while rigging, I could use that tool. And then I have this bottom one here that lets me move my bone around. We're gonna be using this tool in order to perfect our rig and put our bones exactly where we want them when we go to test out the rig and fix any issues that we have with it. Now outside of those two nodes, you can see that my cursor has this circular arrow. This lets me rotate the bone. And this is one thing I want you to keep in mind when placing your bones. Uh, for this character here, he has arms and he has legs. So he has elbows and he has knees. So I want to place that rotation as close as possible to those joints. And right off the bat, you're not gonna know where those joints are. So I'm gonna show you how you can move those bones around to match where those joints are going to be. And then I'll show you a setting that lets you see on your layers where the points are when you're actually placing your bones. So let's go ahead and get started. The first bone that we're gonna create is called the root bone. I'll explain more how that works right now but just place that root bone somewhere along this belt line and towards the middle of the character. So right here, I'm holding, I'm gonna hold down shift and then I'm going to left click and I'm gonna drag towards the left there. And as you can see there, that's my root bone. So this bone is currently highlighted, which lets me know that it's going to be the parent bone to any other bone that I draw after. I'll explain more what that means, but just make sure that this is highlighted when you go to create your next bone because the next bone is going to be the child of this parent bone. So with that bone highlighted, go here towards the tip of this bone and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to left click and we're gonna drag up towards the top of his torso there. Now I didn't add more than one bone in this case because I'm not gonna be creating a bend for this character. Again, I'm gonna make it as simple as possible for you. But let's say you wanna create a bend in his back, you would need at least two bones in order to create that bend. 
The next bone that we're going to create is the head bone. And again, remember where the rotation is at for that bone. That is important. So I want the rotation to be at the bottom of his head here. So I'm going to place the bone at the bottom of his head. And again, I made sure that that previous bone was highlighted and then I drew my new bone. Okay, so now that we have the head bone drawn, I want to draw out the arm bones. However, I don't want to parent my arm bones to the head bone because that's not how our anatomy works. The arm bone is connected towards the torso. So in order to select the torso, using this same Add Bones tool, there's a tool tip. If we hold down Alt on the keyboard, that gives us the ability to select the bone. So I'm gonna hold Alt on the torso and I'm gonna left click and that's gonna highlight that torso, now making that the parent. So now this so now this bone is going to be parent of two different bones at the moment. It's going to be a parent of the head bone and of this arm bone that I'm going to create. So come here towards the center of this shoulder right here. And let's do the same thing. We're going to hold down shift and we're going to left click and drag. So now we're going to connect the next bone approximately where I think the elbow is going to be. And doing the same thing, I'm going to hold down shift. I'm going to left click and I'm going to drag. So now let's do the same thing. I want to create my back arm bones, but as you can see here, the parent that's currently selected is this forearm. So I don't want to have that as the parent. I want to select the torso again. So now the torso is going to be a parent of three bones. So it's going to be for the head and now it's going to be for both sides of the arms. So let's go ahead and let's drag out our next set of bones for the arm. And now we're going to work on the legs. So in this case, the root bone is going to be the bone that's going to move all bones. So all bones that connect back to the root bone, in this case, the head back to the torso, back to the root bone, the same for the arms, back to the torso, back to the root bone. We want to do the same thing for the legs. We don't want to connect the legs to the torso. We want to connect them back to the root bone. So holding down alt and left clicking, highlight that root bone, and then let's draw out our next set of bones for our legs. So I'm going to start up here towards the top of the upper leg here and I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag down again approximately where I think the knee is. I'm probably really off, but we'll fix that later. And then the same thing, I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to drag down. Hold down alt, left click, select that root bone. And then the same thing, holding down shift, left click and drag, left click and drag. So try to have those two bones as similar as you can. If not, that's okay. Again, we're gonna be fixing all of this. So now what I want you to do is start testing these bones and, and see how it works and see how the artwork reacts to these bones. So to test, you're gonna come up here to your bone tools panel and you're going to select the manipulate bones tool, which is Z on the keyboard. Now to move any of your bones around, you're just gonna left click in the general area of where the bone is and just drag it around. See how when I select the forearm that the rest of the arm is moving. Don't really worry about the artwork as far as how the artwork is reacting. We're gonna be able to fix all of that. But right now I just want you to just move around the character and just test and see how this character moves. Or maybe you can even hide if you come over here to the eyeball icon on the right hand side of your layers panel here and you click on that, you can see how the bones are moving. Now check this out, when I move the torso, you can see that it's moving the arms and the head. And remember, it's because the torso is the parent. If I move the head, it's not a parent of anything. It's the child of the torso bone, so the head moves by itself. Same thing with the arms. And then if we come down here to the legs, the legs, just like the arms, move by themselves. So there's a couple of cool things that's happening right now as we're moving these bones around. One of them is what's called inverse kinematics. And I know that word sounds big, but basically it means as we're moving this lower arm bone, that's a child of this upper arm bone, it's affecting that upper arm bone. And when we move this leg, the bottom of this lower leg, it's moving that upper leg bone. When using bones, there's two ways that you can animate your character. One is with inverse kinematics, like we're showing here, and one is with forward kinematics, which means that you move the parent going forward. So for an example, if I was to move this arm, this is an example of forward kinematics. It's the parent moving the child. But if I was to move the child bone, it would only move the forearm. And what I'm using is another keyboard shortcut for my manipulate bones tool. As you can see here, if I hold down alt, 
go ahead and test that yourself, but that rotates a single bone. And this can come in handy. It, it depends on what you wanna do with your animation, but I find that I have a lot of control with both of these methods, both the inverse kinematics and with the forward kinematics. So right now we are on frame zero, which gives us the ability to test all our bones without affecting the actual character or the animation. Because as soon as we select one of the other tools, you can see it snaps back once we're outside of that manipulate bones. So now that you've moved around the bones and you can see how the bones react according to that parent to child relationship that we created, I wanna show you exactly what that looks like. If we come here to the bone tool panel, you can see that there's this tool here called the reparent bone tool. Go ahead and select that. Now this is showing exactly how that parent to child relationship is working. See how all the bones are eventually going back to the root bone? Actually, let's click on the root bone. If I select the root bone, you can see that it's moving all the bones. The bone itself doesn't move. It moves all the bones because all the bones are connected back to it. So all of the rotation and the translation is gonna move all of the bones with that root bone. And that's gonna come in real handy when it comes to animating your character and moving him around. So going back to my reparent bone tool, you can see that all those bones are going back to that root bone. Now for whatever reason, if your parenting doesn't look the same as mine, let's say you accidentally had your hand selected last and then it was parented to your arm. So when you were testing out your rig, you were saying that it had some really funky results. Well, you can fix that in the bone reparenting. Again, it has its tips right here. So if I wanted to fix this and make this lower leg bone the child of this upper leg bone parent, to fix that, I would use this tool tip that it shows here. I'm gonna hold down Alt and left click on the bone. And you can see it highlights that bone that was parented to the, the lower arm. With that bone highlighted, I'm now gonna left click on the upper bone. And you can see that just like the right leg, it's showing that that bone is parented to that upper leg. Now, if I wanted to remove the parenting altogether, while it's highlighted, I would click off of the character. And you can see that it re removes the parenting completely. So I don't want that. So I wanna make sure while this is highlighted, I select the upper bone. And then to deselect, you can hit escape on your keyboard. Now the other thing that I wanna show is the bone strength. So if you go over to the bone strength tool, you can see that there's these semi-transparent ovals and this represents the bone strength. Anything that is near or inside this transparent circle of this bone strength is gonna have influence on the artwork. So going back to my manipulates bone tool, if I move the arm, you can see it's moving the head. And if I move the leg, it's moving the torso. And we don't want that. So a good rule of thumb when it comes to bone strength is you want your bone strength to be basically the same size of the area that it's covering. So in case of the arm, I'm going to left click on that bone that has that bone strength and I'm gonna drag towards the left and I'm just gonna shrink that down to about the same size as the arm. And I'll do the same side for this arm. So I'll do the same thing to this side of the arm. For the head, I wanna lower that to around this size here. Same thing for the torso, it doesn't need to be that much so I can lower that as well. For the root bone, you actually don't want any bone strength because the root bone is not gonna be manipulating or moving any of the arms. It's gonna be moving the entire character. So if you take a look up here at the bone strength tool settings, I have this value of one and watch what happens to that number as I decrease it. You can see it becomes smaller and we want that to be zero. So I'm gonna left click and drag all the way to zero. Sometimes it doesn't do that perfectly. So if you need to just edit that numerical value, just put zero and hit enter and that'll also bring that bone strength down to zero. And then for the legs, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm just gonna lower that bone strength on those legs. And there you go. As far as the bone strength that we just lowered, we still might need to test and manipulate and work with it in order to improve our rig. But for now, go ahead and test out your rig again. So go to your manipulate bones tool and just start moving stuff around and see if you see any difference in terms of the results. And you might not. Again, the legs still affect one another, even though that bone strength is inside of their own artwork. We now need to tell the software what specific layers we want those bones to have influence over. So now we're gonna get into what's called bone binding. So let's start with the head. First click on the head layer, 
Then click on the bone. With the head layer selected, you could actually click on the bone. As you can see there, I'm just left clicking. And you can see that on the vector layers, I actually do have tools for the bone. I have the select bone tool, and then I have a few others. I have manipulate bones, so you can actually manipulate the bones here in the vector layer, which is kind of handy. But right now, we just want to select that bone. The bone binding method that we're going to use for this character is called flexi binding. This is actually one of the most popular and one of the most easiest ones to wrap your head around if you're just starting with rigging. So to bind this bone to this head layer, go up to the bone menu, drop that down, and select use selected bones for flexi binding. Again, get in the habit of using keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcut for this is Control Shift F. And now we're gonna do the same. We're just gonna go down the layer here and we're gonna select the front arm. Now to select multiple bones, you're gonna hold down Shift while you have the select bone tool selected and then click again, go up to the bone menu and then use selected bones for flexi binding. Okay, so let's go down to the next layer. So we're gonna select our torso. So the torso, like I said, it could have multiple bones, but in this case, we just have the one bone. So just select the one, go to bone, use selected bones for flexi binding. All right, now that we have the torso, go to the front leg, select both bones using shift, go to the bone menu, use selected bones for flexi binding. Now for the pelvis, this depends on how you wanna rig your character. Do I want to move the pelvis with the torso or do I want the torso or do I want the pelvis to stay stationary and bind it to the root bone, which also stays stationary? Or do I wanna create a bone specifically for the pelvis? Now that's up to you because it all has different effects. But in this case, let's try and see if we can bind the pelvis with this bone. Now, like I said, your rotation really matters as far as where your bone is placed. So I can actually have multiple layers bound to one bone but in this case, it might not work perfectly, so we'll probably have to fix some things in order to get this to work right. So let's take the risk, and let's go ahead and bind the pelvis to the torso bone. Now we have the back leg, which you've already seen. And you can see that I just made a mistake there, and that's good that that just happened, because now you can see that I actually bound that incorrectly. So I still had the torso bone selected along with my leg bone when I was binding that leg bone. So now watch what happens when I manipulate this. <laughs> Nothing. Okay, so that's not what I was expecting. However, I don't want to have my uh, these two bones bound to one another for this layer. I'm actually kind of confused as to why that's not showing any sort of result there. I might have be having a brain fart right now. But to unbind a, a bone that you bound by accident, let me go back to the pelvis. So the pelvis is still connected and the torso is still connected. Okay, that was weird. All right, so to unbind a bone, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to reselect those two bones and then I'm gonna to go to my bone, uh, use selected bones for flexi binding once again. And you can see with those only those two bones selected and not that other bone, it, it changed the, uh, it updated the binding to the correct binding. Okay, so if that ever happens, just remember that you can just reselect those bones that you only want to be bound to that layer and then go back and bind those once more. And then for the back arm, I'm gonna go ahead and select those two bones. Same for the front arm and bind those. Okay, so now everything should be bound to their specific layer. So let's go ahead and test this. So I'm gonna go back to my main bone layer and I'm going to use the manipulate bones tool. And again, technically I could use the manipulate bones tool on the specific layers, but for me, it's just habit to go back to the bone layer. And I'm gonna start moving things around. So check that out. The head is no longer affecting anything else because now the bone knows exactly which layer it should be influencing. Check the arm. Arm looks good. That other arm looks good. The torso looks good. Oh, and you can see there, as far as that, that pivot on those hips, that's not too bad. I was expecting that to be a little bit worse, but that actually works pretty good. And then the legs, legs look good. They're not affecting anything else. Now, when I say it looks good, obviously there's some distortion there. You take a look at the arm, his arm's getting skinny when it bends, what, what's that about? We wanna fix that. And that's what we're gonna go over in future videos. We're going to clean all this up using smart bones. 
But for right now, let's see if we can, with this testing that we're doing, let's see if we can get this to work a little bit better just using the bone strength. You first wanna set everything up as best you can using bone strength before you move to smart bones because smart bones, even though it's very powerful, it could also really put you in the weeds if you're not careful. So let's go back to just one of these bones. Let's move just this left front bone here, and I'm gonna do so using forward kinematics. So I'm not gonna use it with inverse kinematics. I just wanna use forward kinematics to see how this bone moves. So I'm gonna hold down Alt, and I'm gonna move this bone up. Okay, so we can see right away that this is shrinking because the influence of this forearm is actually overpowering the influence of this upper arm. And that happens when you have two bones that are really close together and we're using flexi binding. The software is doing its best to try to determine which part of the artwork these bones are affecting when they're on the same layer. So let's try to help it out a bit by lowering the strength of this lower arm. So if I go to the bone strength tool and I lower that, you can see that it's starting to come back, but now look what happens when I remove the strength completely. The artwork no longer has anything to grab, the, the bone no longer has anything to grab onto. It doesn't have any influence when I lower it to zero. So this would definitely need some smart bones. If I increase the bone strength here, you can see it's kind of affecting this lower arm. But what th one thing that you want to completely avoid is this. You don't want to have the parent being completely overpowered by the child. So if I was to raise this strength up a lot, you do not want that. Because when it comes to smart bones and trying to fix this mistake, this is just going to give you a headache. It's going to make things 10 times more complicated than it should be. So as far as this upper arm and any of the parents, you want this to be distorted the least amount possible. You don't want this to have any effect based off of the, the children bones. So let's go ahead and let's lower that strength once again. So again, unless we're at zero, this is pretty much what we're getting right here. Let's see if we can increase the, the strength here a little bit. If the lower arm like that is being distorted, that's, that's not a big of a problem. So again, I'm gonna use the manipulate bones tool and hold down alt and move that around. Again, in the arm, there's not really much I can do there unless I fix that in smart bones but I'm looking at his, his sleeve here. I really don't want a lot of movement in that sleeve, but when it, when it comes to the animation and it moving around, it's not as noticeable. So let's take a look at the other arm. We're probably gonna have the exact same result. Yep, have the same result there. So again, let's, let's lower the strength so that there's still influence on that lower arm, but there's less on, that, on that, uh, the upper arm there. Okay, something I didn't really look at before is how the arm is moving completely up. I actually don't want that either. And I think that might be unavoidable. Yeah, that looks like it's unavoidable, unfortunately. We'll try to increase the strength a little bit more in that arm. Decrease it in the lower arm. Getting my keyboard shortcuts confused here. Sorry, I said I wouldn't use keyboard shortcuts, but I'm trying to do this quickly. But still, I'm just using the bone strength to adjust and the, the manipulate bones tool, but I'm just switching between uh, S and Z on the keyboard. Yeah, so that's, that's not good. Let's try this one again. Yeah, see, I want something like that. Okay, and that's looking a little bit better. A little bit less movement on that, on that sleeve there. I'm looking at a couple things, there's the sleeve and then there's the, the arm itself, but the arm, we're just gonna have to fix that in Smart Bones. But like I said, you just want the least amount of possible movement on that parent to make Smart Bones a lot more easier. All right, let's take a look at the legs, or rather the torso, that torso is next. Oh yeah, the torso is pretty good. We're, we're sitting pretty right there. So if your torso, and I'll, I'll go over this, just in case your bone placement is a little off compared to mine. If, if you rotate your torso and it's not as smooth as yours, that's totally okay. I'm probably not gonna be able to get this result again, just eyeballing it. Because I have this pivot point ever so 
slightly or ever so precise inside of this inside of this round area of this pelvis that it almost looks like you can see it kind of rotates offset it offsets on the one side versus the other but it almost works perfectly and as far as that rotation and yours might not it all depends on just how you rig it but i'll show you we'll, we'll go through and we'll fix all this i'll show you how we can fix all that and then let's go to the legs here so then we got the legs okay so again we got a lot of uh influence here in that lower leg in that upper leg when we move the lower leg so let's lower the strength a little bit see if we can get some of that influence off of that leg now i again i don't want to go too low because now that's distorting really bad that artwork and again it's just going to give me more work so something like that i guess that'll work so we have quite a bit to, to work with there let's go to the other leg and again, I'm using Ford Kinematics. I, I'm doing kind of a bad job right now saying what I'm doing, but I'm using Alt on my keyboard with the Manipulate Bones tool, and I'm manipulating these bones, and I'm gonna lower the strength. So again, all this is trial and error. If I was to show me going back and forth to these tools, this would be a really long tutorial. Okay, and I think that looks pretty good. So that's where we'll leave this video right now. If, if you got this far, awesome job, especially if this is your first rig. I know it's not a very easy thing to, to do. It's kind of complicated. Uh, I, I totally get that. I struggled with this a lot when I first uh, was learning how to rig. And I really hope this is helpful for you. If it is, let me know in the comments. Let me know if there's something I didn't cover quite right and I maybe need to go back to in, in another video and, and focus specifically on that. But that's it for this video. If it's helped you, please leave a like on the video and subscribe if you're new, if you want more tutorials, this is what I love to do. Also, I wanna shout my friend out, Eric, who uh, uh, inspired me to make this tutorial. He's got one very similar and probably much more simpler than this one. I'm gonna leave a link to his video down in the description. It's to show you how to create a simple stickman rig. And again, I think it'll be really helpful to beginners, but that's all for now. I will see you later.